Hi you guys and welcome back to another episode of This Academic Life. It is, let's see, Saturday, September 29th, 2012. Um, I wanted to make a, a video today about something that's really, really important for everyone to remember who's working in higher education and especially those of us who are in graduate school who are, especially when you're doing your PhD and those of us who are thinking about going on to um, a career in academia. And that is the fact that you are not your work. I'll say it again. You are not your work. It's something that you do. It's a big part of your life. I totally get that. But it's not who you are. I want to talk about this in two really important ways. The first has to do with when you're actually receiving criticism on your work. Um, or you're asked to rewrite something, the editing process. A lot of times when people get a rejection from a journal or they don't get a scholarship, their first instinct is to say, well, they don't like me, I'm a terrible academic, and you know, I can't believe that they asked me to rewrite my work, blah, 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 blah. When people usually react in that way, it's because they've integrated their work so fully into who they are that it becomes an attack on their self. The best way to combat this and this is the strategy that I use especially when I don't want to edit something or I don't want to rewrite is to realize that what is best for my work is not necessarily what's best or easiest for me and vice versa. So I'll give you a couple of examples. If I am asked to rewrite something, I've been asked to rewrite one of my comprehensive exams and was really really kind of shocked and had that moment of I can't believe I have to do this and I'm really frustrated the thing that I had to realize is that the work itself needs further work. It needs to be edited. It needs to be fleshed out. It needs me to pay more attention to it and to take a little bit more time and put a little bit more effort. Is that what's best for me? No, not really. I don't really want to do it. Um, you know, it's, it's an inconvenience in a lot of ways, but the work demands that I put a little bit more time into it. And in that kind of way, it's, it's almost like having a child. If your child is asking for something or your child really needs to have attention paid to it and they need comforting or they need to be fed, you might be really, really exhausted. You might just be like, I just want a break. But that child needs your attention. And in the same way, our work needs our attention. And it's not to say, oh, you know, you failed and you're completely shitty at school because you needed to rewrite this paper. Use it as an opportunity to say, what does the work need? And if you're really, really passionate about your topic, that will eventually become a source of a lot of pride in a way and a lot of joy that you can respond to the needs of your work. And make it better. It's always about making the work better. It's not saying, you know, it's easy to have a, you know, glass half empty perspective and say, well, you know, I should have known this before and I can't believe that I did this wrong. How can we improve our work? That's always the strategy that we want to take. And the other side of that is that what's best for us um, is not always what the, what's best for our work. And that comes out a lot in terms of burnout and stress. That it might mean that if you're really, really tired, you need to go and take care of yourself. You need to go and rest. If you're sick, if you're suffering from burnout, when people say, oh, but I want to you know, work on this proposal or think about this next step in my degree program, I actually have started to feel really frustrated, and I'm frustrated because I do it myself, where I'm like, oh, I'm sick, but I'm going to be working on this project. If there's an imminent deadline, obviously that becomes a bit more complicated, but if there's not, I feel like for me especially, it's a cop-out to say, I'm just going to work on my PhD work or my MA work. There is so much more to life than a degree or a project. There are so many more things that we can do. That means you might want to pick a book to read that has nothing to do with your work. What about an artistic project, researching something that you find interesting? Like, um, I was really into pyramids the other um, week, and I'm really into that now. And a while ago, I was researching Mount Everest and all this different sort of mountaineering stuff. Find something to research or to get interested in that has nothing to do with your work. Because you'll start to resent your work if you start taking it into your sick time or if you feel like, oh, it just isn't going to hurt if I just, you know, do this thing and do that thing. I find that people, especially in academia, and I'm not saying this to be hurtful, I'm just saying it because I, I see it in myself and I see it in others, that we can become martyrs to our cause. 
we can kind of destroy ourselves and think that we only have to, you know, we're, we're living to learn and we're living for our work. Um, there's a lot more to life than that. There are, you know, we have friends, hobbies, um, partners, family members, and just going out into the world and seeing something else or taking some time to just veg out on the couch. That if you're thinking about your program all the time and the only other option that you have for yourself in downtime is still work, that's a really dangerous thing. And I would urge everyone at whatever stage you're in to start working to combat that urge to always be in the work. It's not good for your work, you'll start to resent it, and it's terrible for your mental health. So you are not your work. Um, I also think that that's important when people are thinking about career options as well. A lot of people have spent a lot of time thinking, okay, I'm going to go do my master's, and then my PhD, and then I'm going to go be a professor. Um, sometimes what happens is that, A, they don't know what it really involves, what's really involved in doing a PhD. They may not understand what's really involved in becoming a professor, which is not, and I'm not saying this to discourage people, I'm just saying that there's, there's a reality behind the process of achieving tenure that's glorified, um, or sometimes really not seen because we're not in that position ourselves. When people take on this work as an identity, giving it up becomes something that's then impossible to do. And people become very depressed, and people become almost suicidal because they cannot imagine their lives without this work. You had a life before it, and you can have a life after it. I've been doing this academia thing for eight years, and yeah, it's a big part of my life, and I've sort of centered my identity around it, but I'm slowly learning that I don't want to be just my work. Because then, if there aren't any jobs, or if I decide that I actually want to pursue something different, and I do, and this is sort of the dilemma in my life, that I'm actually realizing that there's other things that I want to do besides being in academia. If you can't start to um, unravel that from yourself, you'll, you'll be screwed, essentially, if there are no jobs, or if you have to move, or if something happens where you can't be in that work anymore. Am I saying that this to discourage people? No, I don't think so. I'm saying that we should all be really realistic. Um, and that, yeah, being in academia is great, but it's also not this huge prestigious thing that everyone makes it out to be. A lot of people could really not give a shit about the fact that you're writing your precious dissertation or your master's thesis. Like, there's a lot of people who don't care, quite frankly. And that isn't to say that you shouldn't care. It's just about saying that it's not... It's not all it's cracked up to be, and if you decide that you want to be a, a martyr for your cause and always be wrapped up in it and say, oh, well, it's so important, I can't, I won't, I can't and I won't do anything else with my career or my life, I feel like that's shortchanging yourself. And that's putting far too much um, value on this one specific type of work. So I know that I'm being a little bit more... I suppose direct and aggressive in this video. I think in some ways I'm doing this for myself because I know that I need to combat that urge to say this is the life, you know, this is this is my life, this is everything. It's not. And um, and I'm working away at this too and I think we all have to be in this together that when people say, oh I'm having a weekend off but I guess I'll start doing this. No, go do something else. Do, some, do something else with your life. You already work on this for so many hours a week. Do you really want to work on it? Um, like extra, there's tons of other stuff that you can do with your life. So this isn't, but this is partially about finding work-life balance, but it's also about really, really working hard to make this academic work that we're doing just a part of our life. And maybe it's part of a particular phase in our life. Um, and it's important. I'm not saying that it's not important, but it's not everything. And it's not who we are. We are human beings who love and create and imagine. And, you know, we, we're, we're more than our work. So I'm hoping that this video is helpful. If you're struggling with this, I totally understand. I'm always here if anyone wants to talk or, you know, work on strategies to create that balance. And yeah, I'm hoping that everyone is doing well and taking care of yourselves. Okay? All right, so that's all for me for now, and I'll see you in the next video. Okay.